so what I'm going to talk to you today is about a project that uh, we had embarked on uh, in about 2010. 2010 is when uh, my obsession with the typewriter began. Uh, and, uh, you know, this really started with uh, a tiny news item in the newspaper which said that Godridge had stopped manufacturing uh, the, the typewriter. And that it was the last company in the world to do so. Uh, which then kind of triggered a conversation with a friend who was heading the Godrej archives, uh, Vrunda Pathare, uh, and you know, trying to see if he could do something about uh, this idea, which was beginning to excite me uh, as this great idea, this great story about technology and the dying of technology. So you can see, you know, I mean, you know, the obsession kind of moved, uh, stayed for about five, five odd years. I mean, where we would even find stuff like this little uh, matchbox that you see here. But I mean, we'll come to the matchbox and stuff like that later. Let me move on to other more important stuff. Uh, so in 2009 is when the last <coughs> uh, typewriter rolled out of the Godrej uh, factory at Shirwal. And, uh, in many ways, I mean, that's that's where the chapter ended. Uh, so essentially what happened was that a technology which at one point was considered to be the, uh, to stand for uh, modernity was dying because of competition from another technology, which is, which was, which is now seen as a, you know, or was then being seen as a sign of modernity, which is the computer. Uh, so uh, when we landed up, uh, so I couldn't go for the, the final day of manufacturing of the typewriter, but we did eventually land up at the Shirwal factory. So what you see here in those boxes is actually the last batch of uh, typewriter that was manufactured by Godrej. These incidentally were Arabic machines you can see printed on the side of one of the boxes. Uh, so these were largely for the export market, which was a which was a huge uh, market for typewriters. And from there, you see the typewriter, from being an, an a, a item of great utility and something that was very common, what we started seeing it was how it turned into an uh, an object, sort of a retro object, you know, an object of of cool. Uh, where it kind of, uh, along with things like like you see in this photograph of I mean, you know of the gramophone record or film cameras and stuff like that. This is a place. This is a restaurant called Smokehouse Delhi uh, at the Phoenix Mills in Bombay, designed by my very good friend Ayaz Basrai. Uh, so that's their Bombay outlet, and this is this is the Delhi outlet at Khan Market. Again, you can see up there. You know the the old Bakelite phones or. Uh, the typewriter. So how all of these these are kind of technology which is which which we don't use anymore, but how they've sort of stayed on. Uh, so this was in many ways the journey of the typewriter. <clears throat> so nowadays it's it's really rare that you would find an office, uh, you know, with a typewriter. I mean, like I'm saying, I mean, even rarer to find a typist who has enough enough work to keep him busy. But the place that you would really see the typewriters and the typists at work are really on the streets of India, okay? I mean, outside, uh, you know, courts largely, where uh, these people who are called as job typists essentially sit there, uh, and in many ways, fighting redundancy, carrying out their legal documents, birth certificates, affidavits, uh, they sit there, what has come to be known as, uh, you know, the sociability of the street. I mean, these uh, these, these men, uh, largely men, very few, but I mean, very rare to see women there uh, as, you know, they wait. So, uh, so you know, they, they kind of come, they hang around there. I mean, you know, earlier, obviously, there was more work, less time to hang around. But I mean, uh, now I think, you know, that's kind of changing. I'll, so these are some some of the photographs from across India that I'll show you all. Uh, this is at the Tisazari court uh, in Delhi. Uh, you know, one of the things about the typewriter, I mean, to me, it's really this, this great symbol of, of the bureaucracy. I mean, in many ways, you know, I mean, uh, you, 
I mean, you know, you, you really, I mean, that's that's your sort of a link to the Babu Dam, so to speak. Uh, I mean, you know, you you go to these courts and you will see people st standing around these Taipei's who seem to have a, a, a certain strange kind of power that they seem to wield, you know, and people, uh, you know, who are kind of in positions of less power seem to be hanging around them. Uh, that's the kind of perception, you know, that kind of uh, one one kind of gets. Uh, like I saw these ladies, you know, wait. The typewriter, the typists had disappeared. These ladies just kept waiting for this guy for almost uh, almost an hour. Uh, this this is in Calcutta. I mean, you know, funny things when you're doing a project like this, uh, you you try and dig deep into your reserves of memory, trying to uh, you know come up with ideas about what might be potential subjects to shoot. Uh, I, 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 in a very funny thing, I kind of remembered, uh, you know, one of those little jokes in Reader's Digest, which kind of said uh, something like, uh, I, I think the line, it was, it was actually a uh, thing from uh, a Xerox shop in Bombay, where the sign actually read something like, uh, Xerox done in all languages. And I think it had got stuck while working on this project. That's in Calcutta. I was talking to you all about. Uh, I was talking to you all about a certain kind of uh, life around the typewriter. I mean, if you look at this photograph, you will see people. You know, a uh, certain kind of body language, which is you know of, of people who are kind of waiting for long. I mean, there's kind of boredom on their faces. Uh, <clears throat> this guy, the typist here. He's actually scolding this guy for for making mistakes in his own English. I mean, a lot of the typists would take great pride in telling me about how uh, you know they uh, about their skills with language, how people would often come to them, and you know, how they wouldn't know English and we would correct it for them. So this is one of those kind of situations. The customer is getting fired. Typist. That's in Bangalore. The interesting thing in Bangalore, this is outside the city civil court. Uh, I'll be working on the project. Uh, I, you know, I, I started spreading the word around amongst, uh, amongst friends, family. I mean, you know, even uh, other kinds of people who we as journalists really use as our eyes and ears. Uh, I kind of started spreading the word about the fact that I'm doing a project like this. So, uh, put people people look out for typewriters or you know typewriter related information. So in Bangalore, people kept telling me, "Come on, you can't be saying typewriters in Bangalore. This IT city and things like that." When we landed up in Bangalore uh, and we landed up at the city civil court, there was this huge space. I mean, what is known as typist school. Uh, probably about 60, 70 typists who were sitting and working. And the people who took me there, local Bangalore people were aghast because they had no idea that such a thing still existed. So this is uh, in Bangalore. Uh, this guy here is using a facet ma machine. This again is Bangalore. Uh, so you see the flowers here. So invariably in the morning, before they start, they'll do a little prayer to their machine. That's in, that's in uh, Allahabad. Again, I mean, you see the kind of, uh, you know, the, the slowness that comes, uh, that's in Delhi at, uh, outside the sub-registrar's office. Here, it, it was very busy. I mean, it was kind of busting, I mean, you know, activity. That, uh, this was, again, I mean, you know, one of the, that's in, uh, that's in Srinagar at the District Concessions Court. One of the things that we were very keen was to have a, a, a sort of a pan-India feel uh, to, to the whole project. I mean, you know, one of the problems that uh, I've noticed while doing projects is, you know, we guys sit in Bombay uh, and we think, you know, as, as big city dwellers, we think that, you know, this is the center of the universe or rather that this is the universe. So uh, it was very imperative that, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of went out into uh, small town India and into other cities to to find stories because the real typing typewriter stories were hidden in other cities outside of the bigger cities.
this this again is in uh, the same uh, district and score it was funny because we required a lot of permissions uh, you know to to kind of do this because of high security and stuff like that uh, i'm taking you all to the next this is an interesting set of photographs uh, this is from ahmedabad uh, what is called again the city and sessions court what is popularly known as uh, the bhadra court okay because it's adjoining the bhadra fort uh, you know and as mentioning to you all about you know the eyes and the ears and how friends uh, were helping out so a friend of mine an artist friend of mine shreya shreya skarle shreya actually had put up a post uh, with some photographs of this place and uh, you know when you're working on a project i think you you also pick up a lot of random information around it uh, from places that you you know things that you would normally not pay attention to so i i so that post caught my eye and we started following up and we figured that this is what happens so when you go there i mean this is the kind of scene that you see the typists are usually all sitting on the floor and working i have never seen anything like this in all my travels around india uh, <clears throat> so these are these guys who the floor and they are kind of working so they they usually uh, keep you know uh, they use their their little uh, suitcases or briefcases as uh, you know as as a sort of a, a stool uh, so i remember asking these guys why they kind of sit around uh, they probably about 60 70 typists here and they they kind of work uh, both in gujarati and there are guys who also do english typing there are guys who kind of do both uh, and uh, it was it was quite a quite a strange situation i mean you know the the scenario there uh, so if you look at this guy i mean his name is bhagwan das i mean he's he's basically the head of the type is he sits under the tree and uh, you know life goes people come in i mean you know things are being typed in between when there's no work you know he kind of pulls out tanas from his bag and he kind of scatters it around and the squirrels come and feed on it so i mean it's it's, it's quite a charming little atmosphere in the middle of all this bustle of of the of the court uh so uh, so i remember asking them about what why why they kind of sit on the floor i mean you know and then they don't have stools or tables or whatever and uh, i was told like initially there was this the space there's a covered area which initially so uh, so so this this place was a very was a very very, very strange uh, sort of a, a a place i mean where as you can see these these guys are kind of sitting on the on, on the pavement you know they use their boxes their their little uh, suitcases or briefcases uh, as their stools and stuff and you know, that their customers kind of sit around them some of them have chairs depending on age or whatever uh, so this guy here his name is bhagwan das he's the head of the, the this, this union of of typists uh, and he uh, was kind of telling me about how they came to be seated here on the floor so supposedly uh, there was a there was an enclosure that had been uh, you know uh, but before they could move in the more powerful lobby of of the lawyers kind of encroached on that space so that the the, the typists kind of never never got their their tables and chairs and stools so they decided to kind of make the pavement their own so at one point so it's a sprawling complex so at one point i mean there's to be trucks kind of parked there for the night or for a couple of days and i've been told like you know there were days when these guys would also sh- sit under the shade of uh of these uh, trucks and kind of continue doing their work uh this guy uh, i remember his name was naresh uh but naresh kind of was telling me i can remember asking him over tea so don't 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 they kind of start suffering from back aches and things like that and i remember him kind of a uh, very amused by it he said you know possibly now if we have to sit on on chairs or stools i mean we'll probably start getting back aches but i think we have got very used to uh, you know sitting on the floor so in the evenings when they kind of wrap up these guys uh, so there are there are particular places uh, homes which you know where people have allowed them to to leave their uh, their suitcases and they kind of for the day 
they come back next morning and connect it from there again. Uh, one of the, uh, so as I was mentioning, I mean, you don't see too many, you never saw too many women who were working as job typists. Women, there was some for a kid, uh, you know, those were days when we used carbon papers. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I used to be fascinated by the logo of, of course. And uh, there were, I've spent, you know, I've kind of sat and drawn that many times and things like that. Uh, and I remember at one point when we were doing the book, suddenly coming across this logo, uh, a more modern version of, of the course logo, which you see on the left. Uh, so as you can see, the secretary, she's had a change in hairstyle, change in, change in her clothes. The typewriter has kind of evolved to a laptop, though it's a little funny as to why she would, you know, a, 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 a carbon company would uh, kind of use that. But, uh, but the thing is, I mean, so, so for women, I mean, and the typewriter, I mean, you know, this was a very liberating sort of technology. I mean, where suddenly it became for women to step out and 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 work i mean in offices as secretaries as uh, stenographers typists uh, so uh, so like i said i mean it was very rare for us to kind of see uh, women typists out in the public this was one of those rare places in nasik at the district court uh, where where i saw a few of them uh, i'm going to move on to the next bit here uh, which is the peripheral uh, okay, just to give a little bit of a anecdotal thing about, you know, how things seem to have moved a lot. I mean, I'm just taking you all back to this image. Uh, I remember I was working at Time Out uh, magazine and, uh, you know, I happened to kind of ask some of my colleagues who were much, much younger to me. The average age was about, I think, 23, 24. I remember asking them, do they have, where, where do they kind of see it? carbon papers in use anywhere because I would like to photograph. And I remember one of the girls, uh, I think she was in her early 20s, she kind of turned around at me completely befuddled and said, Chiro, what do you mean? What, what, what is carbon paper? Okay, so it was really amusing. I mean, how something that, you know, we had grown up with uh, had just fallen off, uh, you know, the... As, as a utilitarian item for people now. Uh, so uh, as the typewriter in general is kind of facing problems, I mean, you know, a lot of these peripheral sort of uh, services still continue to exist. Uh, for instance, I mean, uh, typing schools exist. I mean, uh, the repairers are still at, uh, some repairers continue to be, operational i mean this is typical of india you know where technology doesn't doesn't just kind of die a quick sort of a death it kind of uh it kind of stays on life support for a while you know i mean like we see with a lot of uh, or at least in when we were younger we kind of saw this you know in our parents generation or you know when like i said when we were younger you would see we didn't throw away things we kind of you know repaired them and we kind of and worked with it. Now that's a it's, it's a it's a tendency that no longer exists. Uh, these are some of uh, uh, pictures from uh, various typewriting institutes. This was at the YWCA, y, sorry YMCA in New Delhi. Uh, so you know this this huge room uh, used to be uh, filled with tables and typewriters where students used to come to work and and practice and learn. Now the typewriters have all been moved away. It's it's a classroom which is uh, for uh, really given to students of fashion designing. Uh, this was in Srinagar. Uh, so as you can see on the board, you know it's it's that typical uh, typing exercise. Uh, so the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It is essentially that each of the alphabets, uh, each of the twenty-six alphabets, are kind of mentioned there. So that's a trick that is used to teach typing. Uh, this is again in Srinagar. Uh, <clears throat> this was a, an interesting place. Uh, this is a, called the Stenographers Guild uh, in Chennai. And this is this lady called Vatsala, uh, Vatsala Krishna. She came back into the Typing Institute very late in life, which was 
she was 50 when we met her. Uh, so her daughter, uh, you know, was, was a chartered accountant. I mean, she kind of had started her own practice. And, uh, you know, she kind of felt that her mother could perhaps, uh, you know, put her other skills to use. Uh, so the mother kind of enrolled in typing classes again to kind of polish up her skills. I mean, uh, it was, it, like I said, it's, it's rare to find people still using the typewriter, but this was, this lady was probably that cusp generation, you know, I mean, uh, so this is an interesting thing outside uh, the Stenographer's Guild. What I found was this most curious statue of uh, Isaac Pittman. Isaac Pittman uh, is an Englishman who was, uh, who's really credited with uh, the invention of of the shorthand uh, the, uh, shorthand inscriptions and stuff like that, I don't know if anywhere else in the world there is a statue of Isaac Pittman, uh, but this was really curious, and it's a tiny one. It's about a foot in uh, in height, and like most statues down south, it's kind of painted in gold, and it and it gets a fresh garland every morning. Uh, so that's the shorthand text, which. You know, if there are younger people in the audience who are not familiar with what I'm talking about, that's the shorthand text. This is at the Hamdard Institute in New Delhi, uh, where a classroom was in progress. This is another in interesting uh, set of people. Uh, they run this thing called the Cambay Institute of Commerce, which is a, a typing institute, uh, one of the oldest such institutes in Surat. Uh, so the Karanjia family, uh, so you see, uh, you know, Mr. Yazdi and Mernosh Karanjia, and that's their daughter, Maru. Uh, so what's also interesting about them is they, they, are, uh, they are very big names in, in, uh, in Gujarati theater, uh, uh, who have kind of put up a lot of plays and, you know, uh, travel around performing and with, with their troupe and things like that. Uh, that's a typing institute in in, uh, in Bombay at Girgaon. I mean, if you all, if there are people from Bombay who have signed up, you may have seen the uh, the signboard of Abhyankar Typing Institute. Uh, you know, near near Harkishandas Hospital. Uh, that's again there uh, at the at the same. Uh, this is in Calcutta. I used to be very fascinated by old manuals and you know things like that. Uh, you know, booklets and things. So. So this is one of those manuals, uh, you know, with, I love those, in, uh, the, the illustrations of, you know, how, what fingers to use to type what, I mean, uh, that again is in Calcutta. So what's interesting is, I mean, you know, because these typing institutes are there, so obviously there's some utility to the whole thing. So the examinations kind of continue. And, and what was baffling was here we were doing this project. We were already a couple of years into it and we were wondering, you know, we're doing the story of the death of technology. And here was this classroom filled with people, with young people who are kind of learning, who are sitting for examinations, uh, you know, to know uh, where they stand with their typing skills. Uh, so it just seemed a bit ironical. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the, the examinations kind of continue because... Uh, in a lot of government jobs, I mean, it is necessary for, uh, they, they still ask you for your typing speed. And uh, they insist that it's your speed, not on a computer keyboard, but on a typing, on a typewriter keyboard. So the examinations kind of continue. Uh, this is all in Bombay, in Girgaon, in one of the schools, which was a center. Uh, and this is in Worli. So you can see the numbers. I mean, so it, it, it just seemed a, a bit of a strange situation. Here we were you know, lamenting the death of technology. And here was this parallel universe where people were still sitting for examinations. That's shorthand examination, both of which happened simultaneously. Uh, so and then, then there are the repairers. I mean, so we came, came across, uh, you know, one of the things was, you know, of this project, was people have often asked me when I've spoken before that how did we go about finding all these things? I think it's important to mention here that uh, you know the Godrej archives, which uh, who had actually uh, who were actually behind this project, were this 
this tremendous kind of resource. I mean, you know, the Godrej, uh, the network of of uh, of Godrej. I mean, which kind of you know, once word kind of spread through that network. Uh, you know, we were able to, they were able to chase down leads for us, I mean, you know, things like that. Uh, so these were, these were all contacts, a lot of which kind of emerged through the Godridge Archives network uh, and the company's network of salespeople and, and various others. Uh, so I remember photographing in a couple of these uh, repair shops. This is in, this is in uh, Mulud. Uh, Hindustan typewriters, and uh, very often, you know, chatting with with these with these men would also lead us to other stories. I mean, uh, like <clears throat> like I mean, these gentlemen here kind of had told me about a house. Uh, I'll come to that house in a moment. Uh, about a house that kind of resembles a typewriter, you know, and it was the most intriguing sort of conversation. Uh, and how we kind of chase that house down. So these are, I mean, so the typewriter essentially, this is in one of the shops. A, a typewriter would have, most typewriters would have a minimum of about 1800 parts. I mean, that's that's a staggering number of parts. Uh, these are just tiny springs, uh, just to give you an idea about the variety and the range that exists. Uh, this is another one called Supreme Typewriters in Bombay. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this is another very interesting lady that we came across. Uh, you know, her name is Asha Velankar. Her husband uh, had started, uh, he used to be a repairer uh, of typewriters. And uh, one day he kind of received uh, a proposal in marriage. And that proposal in marriage was to his boss's daughter. And that's how Asha uh, kind of got into the business. So she and her husband then started a little business called, a little enterprise called Honesty Typewriters. Uh, so I remember asking her why this peculiar name and she said, because we believed that we were very honest and we conducted our business with great honesty. So Asha was telling me how at one point, uh, you know, largely her husband would be repairing the stuff and she would do peripheral stuff because the home also kind of worked uh, as the office, so people would come in, customers would come, they would wait, so she would, you know, make them tea and, you know, generally uh, make them comfortable and things like that. Sometimes she would also help with little little things like cleaning the machines and things like that, uh, you know, oiling them, cleaning them and stuff of that kind. So now, obviously, all that is dead. But, I mean, if you go to their house, I mean, you know, the, the presence of the typewriter kind of still lingers in very odd ways. So if you look at that little box in the front, that little round red box, I mean, she uses those to keep, you know, buttons and needles and thread. I mean, that sort of thing. So, I mean, you would find uh, little, little uh, memories of the typewriter hovering around in strange corners all over the house. The tools, she said, like, you know, I couldn't get myself to throwing away the tools. So the tools kind of still still are there in a house. Uh, <clears throat> that's an interesting set of people we met again in Srinagar. Uh, you know, they're the Ahangar family, the gentleman in the white shirt in between, sitting in the middle. Uh, and those are his sons at the back, and that's his grandson. So that's three generations uh, who have been into typewriter repairing uh, in, uh, in, in Srinagar. Uh, and so uh, Mr. Angar, I mean, you know, initially, I mean, we were told like he's, he's got a thing with for machines. I mean, you know, he, the story went that he could, you gave him any machine and he could repair it. Uh, and I think he got into this because when he, uh, from, from uh, repairing, uh, repairing guns, which kind of in the olden days, uh, you know, people, people had at homes. Uh, he's even kind of known to have repaired an X-ray machine in a in a in a hospital uh, in 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 Srinagar. So he was a man who was much in demand. I mean, obviously, I mean, uh, you know, work had started depleting. I mean, you know, so the younger younger lot. Uh, so it was surprising that uh, his grandson was still interested in in kind of uh, joining the business. Uh, this was this is the last manufacturer of typewriters. 
you know, it was again curious. This is uh, something that uh, Runa and her team, I think, kind of found out. So we landed up in in Allahabad. Uh, you know, this this more fascinating stories. Uh, so most most uh, most typewriters, uh, most manufacturers had kind of shut down. Uh, you know, making these little types. So this is, you know, one of the important things to understand is that this this is a very high. It's a very high kind of uh, job, uh, making types. I mean, you know, you could you could do jugad and you could repair some of the other stuff, but the but the type is what requires a lot of skill to make. So uh, so Naresh Sagar's characters type characters types at Alabad is. Uh, is, is the last company which still kind of makes these types, or at least I'm hoping they still do, because when we were when we had met them, uh, they were still uh, they were kind of uh, talking about, you know, that they might move uh, operations to China and things like that. So the characters type types uh, company. Hey, hello. Yeah, go Hello. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, this company, they kind of, as you can see, this is this is the Bengali script. So they were making uh, they were making types in all kinds of languages uh, from around the world, uh, and they they seem to be the, they they were the, actually the last guys who kind of remained. So if you see, this is the process of making these types. Uh, so they would engrave. Uh, you know the font on these these acrylic sheets, and on the other side is the lowercase. And those those markings are things which you and I would would not know. But I mean, it's something which which the you know the designers and and the the guys who make the uh, the fonts there would understand those instructions. So from those, I mean, it's kind of there's a kind of process of reduction to the tiny little type that you kind of see. Uh, as you can see, this is the the this is the alphabet Q, which is being engraved uh, on on these acrylic sheets. That's the kind of factory. I mean, if you look at the factory, you would think you know they could be manufacturing car parts or something, or or God knows what. I mean, you know, but what actually comes out is really uh, is really tiny uh, types. So you can see here uh, for those of you who may not. Uh, younger people who may not know what I'm talking about will get a sense. So this is obviously a reverse. It's a mirror image, uh, you know, which which then kind of makes the the proper impression on on the paper. That's the uh, that's the quality control department. Uh, so they're kind of so each type is kind of uh, checked before it kind of is is set out into the world. Uh, I'm going to take you all quickly through, you know, some of these fascinating other people that we kind of met. Uh, that's uh, that's Mr. Rajesh Palta uh, and his son Keshav. Rajesh Palta, when when I met him in Delhi, uh, had a collection of about 70 odd typewriters, uh, and he kind of was hoping that one day he would set up his museum, uh, a museum of typewriters. Uh, he was working very hard trying to figure out how to go about it. So he, uh, you know, he's been in the business of, of typewriters. Uh, he was, a, was, I think, uh, uh, he kind of had a dealership of typewriters, Godrich typewriter. And uh, so once business in the 80s and early 90s started petering off, uh, he, uh, you know, one day he had a, a, an inquiry from a lady who asked him about a particular vintage typewriter. And I think that kind of set him on a hunt where his son actually mentioned that, you know, possibly that could be an interesting business opportunity to kind of try and, uh, to try and you know, acquire and then sell uh, vintage machines. So uh, being in the business, I mean, they were always... Uh, you know, machines in, in various stages of, of repair that would kind of pass through his shop. And he and his team then would kind of inspect them and, you know, start repairing and, you know, refurbish them and, you know, try and get them as close to new, try and sell. Uh, 
he now also kind of you know trolls things like ebay and you know uh, places like that trying to uh, find old machines uh, you know he's saying finding old machines was never a problem really i mean uh, but i think uh, i don't think uh, mr palta's museum is is up as yet but i think his collection i'm sure must have grown by now <coughs> these are what my my colleague uh, siddharth used to call hobby typists who were essentially kind of younger people i mean who seem to have taken to the typewriter uh, in an odd way i mean you know, it seemed like they had no reason to kind of uh, you know be in love with the technology but they were uh, that's that's simarpreet kaur who was a who was a journalist who was an, who was a journalist who was the editor of an in flight magazine uh, and uh, she kind of had uh, a 1960s brother typewriter and whenever she would travel she would travel with her with her typewriter and it was very funny the kind of stories she would tell me of the kind of things that she encountered she got stopped at an airport once uh, because uh, you know the, the security in the and uh, you know they said they needed to kind of open the the suitcase uh, or the or the case in which the machine was and it so happened that the you know it was an old old casing and and the lock got jammed which kind of then created much more amusing anxiety all around and eventually when they managed to open the case you know she had to kind of explain to them saying you know this is like purane zamane ka laptop and things like that and the security guards were most amused and they kind of you know kept clicking on the buttons uh trying to see how it worked uh so <clears throat> this is this this young boy called siddharth soni uh siddharth uh you know he kind of discovered the typewriter quite by chance i mean they were moving homes to guwahati and uh from i think jalandhar they were moving and you know as things were being packed he suddenly found his grandfather's typewriter and i think he instantly fell in love with it uh, his parents however didn't have much of a desire to carry carry it along with them they wanted to give it off to their gardener's daughter who had just turned 18 and they felt that you know she might have better job prospects if she had the typewriter but i think young siddharth i think who was who was probably 8 or 9 years old wouldn't have it any other way so he just wanted to take it along with him and on the flight you know he was kind of fiddling around with with the typewriter much to everybody's amusement uh, and i think that's how his fascination with the typewriter started uh, he would usually use the typewriter uh, you know to to write his poetry or little notes to himself and stuff like that uh, initially he told me how he would make a lot of mistakes when he would type for 50 on a page and slowly you know his speed improved and all of that but the most uh, interesting anecdote was i don't know many of you might remember in 2012 there was a huge power outage in in north in the in the whole whole of north india and uh, which kind of made national news and stuff like that so siddharth uh, was in college then and he was he had assignments to kind of submit and obviously his laptop died after a point and that's when he kind of suddenly remembered his typewriter which he had been neglecting for a while so siddharth was the only guy in his class who managed to submit his assignment because he had his typewriter and he was very chuffed about it so siddharth wanted to start a website called revivingtypewriters.com uh, when i had met him i'm not sure if if that is on or what's what's with it but i mean that's siddharth uh, that's another uh, that's a lady i'll actually quickly skip through that uh, i was mentioning to you all about a house that's that's the house the most peculiar so uh, of of sites that you would come across uh, you know so the patels uh, i was told about them by <clears throat> one of the repairers a photograph of him that i had shown you all earlier uh, so they told me about you know we remember uh, there was this guy who had a house which kind of looked like a typewriter and you know this is the problem right i mean you know people tell you that he was he had heard about a house that looks like a typewriter and you're wondering like you know what was he told what did he imagine 
What is he telling you? How are you imagining? So there are various levels of Chinese whispers that, that are possible here. And, but I remember mentioning this to Runda and the way, you know, we were all very excited. But we had no idea about this guy. I mean, you know, there was no, there was no phone number, nothing. But then again, I mean, I think the Godrej, the great Godrej network kind of kicked in. And eventually, <clears throat> I think he was uh, identified. But I mean, we landed up in, uh, in Aurangabad, but you must understand this is another problem that, uh, you know, you sometimes when you're photographing buildings, it's also about, would you have a vantage point? And I really didn't know that it was on the, on, on the roof of his house, uh, but we kind of got lucky. Uh, so Mr. Patel, who had done this, so the story really goes that, uh, you know, he used to be a typewriter repairer. And this house of his, I mean, when he built it, was really on the outskirts of Aurangabad. There was nothing else. And he wanted his house to be a, a sort of marker of his identity, meaning people should, people should know that this is a house, the owner has something to do with typewriters. So, uh, so when the house was being constructed, uh, you know, he would tell the masons and, you know, uh, these construction guys, but I mean, they all thought he was a little loony. Uh, and uh, they just wouldn't understand what he was trying to, trying to tell them. So he got down, his son told me, his, he got down, you know, uh, and got his hands dirty trying and, and kind of designed all these keys. Uh, you know, so as you can see, there's a space bar and all of that. Uh, it's it's still incomplete. They kind of ran out of money, so uh, so he wanted to kind of continue doing it in in the Diwali that was coming up after we met. Uh, so now his his those are his grandchildren. His grandchildren kind of you know usually play on the terrace. They kind of uh, uh, fly kites and things like that. So I remember asking him how come he never thought of painting it or at least marking the alphabets on it, and. I mean, obviously he had thought this through very clearly and he kind of told me, oh, but I mean, what's the point? You wouldn't be able to see it. I mean, unless you're flying over my house, you know, so, so there you have it. I mean, you know, there's this most curious uh, house. I mean, you know, and some of you might actually uh, find this interesting because there's a kind of thing going around online now about a guy in Belgao who's designed his house to look like a camera. Uh, so I was reminded of, Mr. Patel, when I came across that story, uh, that's Vasudev Barve, who has a Limka book of records, uh, and uh, you know, a mention in the Limka book of records because he can teach you how to learn typing blindfolded, and he guarantees in 25 minutes. So we found. So that's one of my students, uh, you know, and and she actually found uh, a note about him nailed on a on a tree in Villeparle in Bombay. And that's how we kind of went and chased it down. Uh, you may have seen things like these, you know, in, in days before emojis. I mean, we used to get, uh, you know, messages. This I remember coming to me on Gokulash to me. Uh, so <clears throat> there, there are people here who, uh, you know, who are called as typewriter artists. And... I was mentioning at the beginning of the talk that, you know, how in a, when you're doing a project like this, you kind of dig very deep into your reserves of memory, trying to, trying to pull out as much of information. And I remember kind of one of the, the notes uh, that I had written to myself was uh, about these people, because I remember when I was started my career in the newspapers, those were days when you still got physical letters to the editor. And on, on certain occasions, could be, say, a Gandhi Jayanti, could be Shivaji Jayanti, or whatever it was, we used to receive letters in the office where it would be, say, a portrait of Shivaji, but drawn on a typewriter. So when I reached out to my colleagues from that time, no one kind of remembered, uh, you know, seeing anything of that kind. And uh, this was actually the year of the World Cup, you know, which, which Sachin, uh, which was being touted as... Sachin's last World Cup, and you know, India was going to win it for Sachin and things like that. And um, I remember one night, kind of going back home, and the DNA newspaper had, uh, uh, you know, a, a thing. They were doing a campaign, you know, for Sachin. Uh, and I remember the top 
corner of the newspaper, there was a very tiny illustration. I was in the train and the train was, you know, moving. And so I couldn't see clearly, but I mean, I remember the train stopping at a station and I kind of quickly kind of, you know, holding up the newspaper, which my, you know, the past, my co-passenger was reading. And I kind of, my heart kind of, you know, skipped a few beats because it was a mention about, it was a drawing of Sachin done on a typewriter. And I remember men messaging Runda that night saying, please check out the newspaper. And that's how the hunt for Mr. Vasudev Barve really started. I mean, you know, that's Mr. Vas the, sorry, that's Mr. Chandrakan Bide. Uh, so we found him eventually uh, in, in Dadar in his house. That, that's photographed, I photographed him in his house. Uh, Mr. Bide used to be an employee in a bank and uh, his uh, thing with making uh, art on a typewriter really started while he was working there, but he was very insistent. He told her that never on office time. Uh, so he kind of, uh, so what you would see is, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people like this around India. Uh, you know, so there's a, so like Mr. Bide, you can see he's done a portrait of, uh, Mr. of Bal Thakre, of Dilip Kumar, Lata Mangeshkar, Gandhi, Sachin Tendulkar and stuff like that. Uh, there are guys, I mean, if you could, so there was this gentleman down south who would, uh, uh, who wouldn't probably have Bal Thakre, but say he would have Jailalita or, you know, Karunanidhi or uh, things like that. So there would be local flavor in, in the kind of stuff that people were doing of this kind. Uh, so, uh, so Mr. Bide is one of these uh, people. I mean, and so he remember telling me like, I mean, you know, how uh, drawing Dilip Kumar is very difficult because he had a lot of hair, it seems. Uh, Sachin provided its own kind of challenges because of his curly hair. And I think he started using the at the rate sign, uh, you know, to kind of uh, create the curly hair on Sachin's head. Uh, this is another curious thing. You know, this is something that never made it to the book finally. Uh, but I mean, it's also one of my regrets that we couldn't uh, do this. This is a gentleman called Dev Kumar Biswas in Calcutta, uh, who had done uh, all the illustrations of Shukumar Rai's Abol Tabol uh, on, on the typewriter. Uh, so that's the cover of his book on the left. So he's published a little book, uh, self-published book. Uh, so which is in basically the same layouts and same format as Abol Tabol, except the illustrations are his, as you can see, uh, you know. Uh, I was very keen that, uh, you know, we include him in the project because I think as I was talking about this pan-India flavor, uh, you know, uh, but I mean, somehow we never managed to convince Mr. Biswas to be part of the project. But I mean, this is the book that he gifted me. So I'm kind of sharing some, some of the photographs, these two pictures <clears throat> from there. Uh, that's the Bhandari's. I'm almost to the end of it. So this is uh, Mr. Bhandari, uh, Pramod Bhandari. Uh, I was again mentioning to you all about how word was spread uh, amongst people I knew. Uh, so my gallerist uh, in Calcutta, uh, Ms. Ms. Shubriya Banerjee, uh, she kind of mentioned how one of her clients had bought a painting from her, which was about a Calcutta typist. Uh, so we kind of tracked him down from their records to, Gur to Gurgaon. Uh, so that's the painting. Uh, you know, that's him and his wife. Uh, they're now retired and they kind of are in Gurgaon. Uh, so he was telling me about why he bought this painting. So they kind of have an old Calcutta connection. I mean, they both are, they both grew up in Calcutta, met in, uh, met in Calcutta, got married there. Uh, he started his work in Calcutta. He has great memories of this, of, of the city. And he remembers that, you know, as a, as a young man, when he, when he would be walking around the city, uh, he would often see, you know, these, these typists sitting by, uh, you know, Esplanade and, you know, BBD Bag and things like that. And so this painting for him, he said, you know, I could always have a picture of the Howrah Bridge. I mean, you know, of any other Calcutta landmark. But he said, for me, the, the real essence of Calcutta was really in these, these typists who are kind of slowly fading out. Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's a... Uh, you know, some people have still 
held on to the typewriter. I mean, you know, and, and very curious. This is this is uh, Ms. Maruk Algopi uh, of the Parsi Homeopathic Pharmacy at Dovitalao. I remember spotting the typewriter one day as my taxi whizzed past her uh, her shop. And when we went there, they still continue to use the typewriter because uh, you know to type up labels. I said, but why can't you kind of handwrite it? He said, you know, because sometimes the liquid leaks and then the ink runs. So, so I think it's it's interesting, you know, how the machine has kind of survived uh, despite its many challenges uh, in 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 the oddest of. Thank you so much. I I hope I haven't stretched my time. Uh, I hope I haven't stretched, gone beyond my limit. Uh, so, yeah. no, you haven't. No, you haven't, Shiro. It was a fascinating presentation. You made not only the machine come alive, but also the stories uh, Thank you. around the machine, uh, and very interesting, minute observations. I particularly like the one where uh, you talked about using the and sign to depict uh, Sachin's <laughs> curly hair. Yes. <laughs> so that was a master touch. Uh, we all know that the typewriter influenced various aspects of our lives in a particular day and age. Right. And as you were showing that picture of that Aurangabad house, yes. uh, uh, I was particularly reminded of a, a Hindi film song, which uh, when Yes, yes, that's right. So would you yeah. like to talk about how typewriters influence cinema in general? Uh, you know, I, uh, maybe, I, I, maybe I, Helen's I, song could be a jumping off point. Well, you know, I, I don't think I would be able to talk about cinema, honestly. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen that video. I've seen that video. Uh, but I really wouldn't, wouldn't be in a, sorry, I wouldn't be able to, uh, I mean, you know, there, there's actually an essay on, on, uh, on, on, on cinema and the typewriter in the, in the book. Uh, but I mean, it, it's difficult for me to talk about okay. about cinema specifically you know though it does keep popping up in odd ways you know like i mean you would see uh, you know in, in in older devanand films i mean you would see in office uh, situations where you know johnny walker is 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 kind of uh, is kind of trying to romance the office secretary and you know she's at a typewriter it does keep popping up in odd ways it does also pop up in newer newer films now, you know. Uh, but I think it's it's kind of I mean you again see the typewriter more as a retro object. In the new... uh, Preeti Kelka reminds us that the song which I was th thinking about was it goes typewriter tip 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 karta hai. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. I think it's right. available on YouTube. I think oh. it's available on YouTube if I'm not mistaken. Yes. That was the first visual which came to my mind when I was seeing the the typewriter right. house. <laughs> so tell us how long did uh, how long was this book in the making? Uh, so it, it kind of uh, you know so uh, like I mentioned, I first uh, you know my interest was first peaked in about two thousand nine, uh, and which is when Vrunda at Godrej Archives and I started exchanging emails. I think I probably spammed her, you know, with with my notes. And things like that, and I think you know, just keep saying, no, 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 can we do something about it and all that. So it started by the time we actually started. I think made our first trip. Uh, I think it was in 2010. Uh, the book, if I'm not mistaken, came out in 2016. So I think it was about four, five years that I think uh, we chased the typewriter all over India. I think one of our fears was, you know, at the back of our mind was if we keep delaying stuff, that a lot of the stories that we want to chase would probably die off. But like I said, uh, you know, uh, technology in India doesn't doesn't just die off quickly. I mean, you know, it, it kind of lingers on, uh, you know, there is, it's kind of cannibalized. I mean, all of that kind of thing happens and it kind of lingers on. It lingered on long enough for us to to kind of document a lot of uh, stories. I mean, I think one other thing that was important, you know, was uh, if one looks at the project, and I think it's an important point to be made here. Uh, you know, the project is actually backed by Godrej. Um, and, uh, you know, this is, it's very easy. I mean, you know, and in my experience of, you know, trying to find people who would back your ideas, uh, it's 
have been one of those projects where we said, no, no, we'll do the history of the Gothridge typewriter. But I think this was also a certain kind of magnanimity of vision, which kind of said, no, no, this is really going to be about the typewriter in general. Okay, it's, it's a given that I think the history of Godrej's typewriter is very much intertwined with the history of the machine in India. So I network, I mean, I don't think if they would have uh, finally found a lot of the leads, you know, or the ideas, I think it would have been, uh, you know, I think the project would have ended much earlier. Yeah. Brunda from Godridge reminds us that uh, there is a chapter on typewriter in Hindi cinema in the book. So that's, that's right. something which people can go back to. And Mrs. Godridge reminds us, in addition to Hindi cinema, there's also a typewriter concerto. Let's move on. There's an offer for you. Somebody has offered their, their Venezuelan typewriter, vintage oh, 1980, to, to, to add to your collection. Yes, oh, she wonderful. Says, she wants to add it to your collection. I don't know whether she means uh, <laughs> in reality or virtually. Uh, uh, another question which went by was, besides Godrej, who were the other Indian manufacturers of typewriters? So, you know, so we found, uh, so we were in different parts of the country. We found different uh, brands kind of being, being used. So I saw like, you know, in Bangalore, uh, down south, I was seeing a lot of facet machines. I mean, in, in Bengal and also seeing a lot of Remington. I mean, you know, in the West, we were seeing a lot of Godrej. So, so I think, I mean, these were some of the, the things that uh, some of the brands that kind of kept uh, popping up wherever we went. Uh, these were largely the three that we were seeing. If I, so Vrunda may be able to add if, if I'm forgetting any, but I mean, these are the three that I remember very. Okay. Uh, you know, that, that we kept encountering wherever we went, Godridge, Remington, uh, and Asset. Uh, One of our regular attendees, Dr. Ashish Kelkar, reminds us of another typewriter portrait artist from Mumbai, and his name is Kuday Talwalkar. Perhaps right. you've come across him or, or not? Ani, I think he, we, had, we had actually found, we had actually uh, got his information. We never got down to photographing him. Uh, him guy who's in Thane and I think he's also the guy who has a uh, Vrinda has some value added comments. She mentions that Godrej was actually the only Indian manufacturer but Facet and Halda were also being manufactured here uh, for their parent companies and Remington had a factory in Kolkata. Uh, Parina right. who is, was earlier in advertising wants to know if uh, any fonts or typefaces evolved because of the typewriter. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't think there were too many very complex fonts. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I think there were a few, uh, there were a few fonts that kind of, there, there wasn't a great range, to be honest. I mean, uh, you know, even from what, uh, you know, we, we saw at the characters, uh, office and in their files, there wasn't, there wasn't a, a kind of very wide range of fonts. There were a few. I don't think any kind of really evolved out of it. I mean, it's you know what we see now as you know the courier new that font. I mean, which is really a a, a takeoff of the typewriter font, popular typewriter font. Okay, uh, I think we are on to our last question. Tanya wants to know if uh, uh, wants to know what that engraved acrylic sheet was used for. You did mention a few details, but would you have okay. some more? Okay, so that acrylic sheet is really the, uh, you know, the, the starting point of, of how you start designing the font. Now, from that, it's kind of, it's kind of reduced, the, uh, the size reduced, and then the casting is done uh, in that tiny, uh, you know, size in which you kind of uh, actually find it on the machine. So the thing is, what happens is if, if you think about it, if you kind of were to start from a smaller size and were to enlarge, you would lose detail. And therefore you kind of make, you do rave the act design and the details of the font. Yeah? Okay. Thank you.